Hello everyone, and welcome to the first official episode of Let's Create an Amusement Park Adventure Map. I think that's what it's called. Uh, yes. So, on today's agenda, we have redstone stuff. So, this was actually the only topic that was requested in the last video. So it made it easy to choose which one I should do. But, a couple things you should know before we start out. I'm going to be going through some more advanced redstone topics. And so if you don't really know the basics of redstone, I'd highly recommend you go look up a video on that or something. There's lots of great ones out there. And I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, specifically, somebody requested that I show you guys how I did my elevator ride, or whatever it's called, drop tower. And so I'll definitely go through that. And then, after that, I'm going to do a little bit more redstone work because I wouldn't want to go an episode without actually creating a ride. So we'll start out with this. So the basics behind this elevator is you have these dispensers with water in them. And these signs here are just to hold the water in place. But when you apply power to the redstone, the water is dispensed and the boat rises. And then you have to apply power again to remove the water and the boat will fall down. So as you can see, this elevator right now is pretty tall. It's a lot taller than the 15 block redstone limit that we have. So I'll show you guys how I got past that problem. And also I'm going to show you how I implemented different floors. Of course this redstone is a little bit better than the one or than the redstone I did over here, which if I can show you it is quite complex, messy, and not very good, but it works fine for me and for hopefully everyone else. So we'll get started with that. So the first piece that is basically essential to this whole thing is actually allowing this water tower to turn on and off. So the way I'll set that up is I'm going to have a button and this button will control the tower itself. So every time that button is pressed, the water will turn either on or off. And then I'm going to run this into a sh pulse shortener. I don't remember what they're called. I think that's what it is. But basically what this does, if you don't already know, is it takes your pulse that, when you press a button, you can see the pulse is quite long. What it does is it takes that pulse and shortens it down to one or two ticks. With this version, I'll just do one. But how it works is this redstone turns on and it powers this torch off. So when this torch is off, this torch turns on. But just one tick later, this uh, repeater turns on, turning off that torch. So the pulse is shortened like so. Okay, hopefully you already knew that. If not, now you know something new. Uh, the next piece that I want to do is going to be a piston tape kind of thing. Uh, what this is going to do is it actually... Since... Okay, let's start from the beginning here. Since redstone can only travel 15 blocks before you have to do a new... Uh, it can only travel 15 blocks before you have to extend the pulse with a repeater or whatever. So what we're going to do here is take this redstone and make it so that... Ooh, I did something wrong here. One minute. We're going to make it so that the... Ah, uh, nuts. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make it so that whenever you press this button here, the piston is going to go forward, or it's going to extend and then quickly retract. And what that's going to do is, once it extends a block, 
this will be powered and it'll turn on all of these little water tower things. When it retracts and extends again, it'll turn it off. So pistons can push up to 12 blocks, I believe. So I'll just set that out, mark that out. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it should still be able to push it. There we go, that works perfectly. So I'll just break one block on the top here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make the second last block also be a solid block. And the reason for this is because when this piston extends all the way up here, we're going to have another repeater circuit waiting to turn that block on. The reason I have this glass block here and not just have the piston or not just have the wood come directly up to the piston is because the way pistons work it can get glitched out and the piston won't be able to retract so we have to have that glass block here so what will happen is this will push that up and then this block or this redstone will come through here now what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a little bit of a reset switch for this piston and we'll give it a delay of three ticks so once that block comes up the piston should retract again for some reason that's not working oh okay I see the problem we have a bit of an issue with the redstone here um, let's see how can I fix that Hmm. Not too sure. Okay, that should be going through there. We might have to make it so that this block is just a glass like that as well, which isn't too much of an issue. And then we'll extend this block up. I'm not sure if I had this problem with the last build, but I might have. Okay, and then when this block retracts... Oh, why is this here? Oops, we did something wrong. Okay, try again. One more time. There we go. So now what should happen is when you press this button, it turns on the entire water tower. Or it should. Hmm, that's weird. It didn't. Anyway, it should turn on the entire water tower. And then when you press it again, it should turn it off. Okay, it did turn it all on. It just, the pulses are reversed. So, quick, simple way to fix that is throw that there. There we go. Okay, so that's the first component. And then I'm going to leave this one as wood because we need to have half slabs. But the other components should have some sort of color to them. And hopefully I can remember to do that. There we go. So the idea is they're supposed to all activate at exactly the same time so that when the uh, boat falls, no matter where it is, it won't get caught somewhere. It sounds like it's uh, going at different times, but it should all be the same. So yeah, that's the first part of the machine. So now that we have that set up, we can get onto the next part. And one final note that I forgot to add is in the original design, I actually had another piston going down like this if I can get that set up and then I had another piston tape going all the way down another 12 blocks below the ground or just below where this piston was set up and the reason was that allowed me to make the whole thing significantly higher finally I do realize that there are other ways to make an instant pulse like this or make everything activate at the same time as you can see I've the, both the piston tapes here just coming to point that out I do realize you can do things like instant wire and that kind of thing but I wanted wanted to try to keep this as small as possible so it could fit within a very small tower and so that's the reason why I chose this method okay now I'm gonna actually get on to the next piece okay so the next part in this whole contraption is controlling floors 
The way this works is, when the boat comes up, in order for it to stop on a specific floor, you have to have this block water, but then these two blocks air. You can actually just do it with one, but that can obstruct the view of the boat, so it's not ideal. So, if we just power this, just a minute, I have to figure out how to do this. So if we power this block here, that's going to turn on these three blocks, and then once you press this button, this will switch everything. So if you want to keep that in mind, you can power these things ahead of time, because that little circuit down there will always just switch the different components, but it's completely optional. So that can stop you on this floor, and then when you want to get off this floor, you simply power it again, and the boat will continue upward. Now, there's a little circuit I set up that will actually make this a little bit nicer to deal with. I didn't use this in the original design, but again, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you guys. So what this does is it makes it so anytime you switch the, le the lever, or lever, however you pronounce it, if you switch it on or off, on will put the water there and off will take it off. And then there's a nice other little function, whereas if you do a single pulse, it just switches at once. So that's kind of cool. So the reason this is actually helpful is what I'm going to do with this little piece here is I'm going to set up a chain of these. So for example, we might have all of these controlling different floors. And then what I will have is a set of these little blocks here and some sticky pistons. Oh, yeah, one block higher. There we go. So what this will do is if you ever want to stop on a floor, all you have to do is push this lever or pull it back. And then that'll be all set up in a nice row so it's easy to control. So I'm going to first set up all of these little floor stoppers and then we'll put that together. So again, I'm just putting power into this gray block because that'll affect all three of these little dispensers here. So I'll just set that up really quickly. Okay, so I've set that system up. So what I have here is basically just the four uh, chains or the four buses that lead to the floor switches and all four floors that I have set up each run down to one of these four little control areas here and then these uh, systems here or whatever they're called <laughs> these tick delayers are the same thing I showed you over there where if you have your pulse down or turn it on the floor will become selected and then when you turn it off the floor will be unselected so I'll just show you how this whole thing will be would be used in the actual ride oh that didn't work at all oh I'm missing this okay that works too so you have your boat here, and say you want to travel to floor two. So that would light, or this, that would turn this on. And then to start the rod, you would push this button. You can do that in the other order, doesn't really matter. But you just have to make sure that the pulses don't interrupt each other. So you would stop here at floor two, and of course wait there for a little bit of time. And then once you're done with floor two, it would be released, and maybe you would stop at floor four, and you would be sitting here. That would eventually be released, and then of course the button would make them fall, make them lift up a little bit again, fall a little bit, lift up a little bit, etc. So that's basically how the machine works, or how the ride works. Those are the general components. Of course, I'll just kind of show you my system a little bit. 
if I can get down here. I have the same general idea. This piece here controls the floor switch, so now the floors are now the elevator would be turned on as you can see all the water is there and then if you push it again all the water gets removed this circuit here if I remember correctly leads to the floor switches so this actually leads all the way down here all the way underneath to a really long circuit goes down 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 and let's see if I can get past here goes to this lamp leads over to the other side here and then these long chains here will go toward selecting the floor so behind these would be oh nope I showed you the wrong thing it goes that line actually goes to these pieces on here which go and select the floor here so that turns off this dispenser and this dispenser and then the other section I have for that is I have this chain of torches that goes up here and that also turns off a dispenser so there's two dispensers turned off in total now, as you can see, I have a dispenser leading to every single piston, and as we saw in the other example, you can do that much more easily by just going to every third piston or so. But once I had the whole thing set up, I didn't really want to change it for to make it work better. This whole thing is a really big mess just because I wanted the boats to be able to come all the way down into the basement here, and I will actually turn this off. This was my boat dispenser so just just in case you're wondering and then what this will eventually do once I have the ride fully set up is it comes down here and they'll fall down here into a cactus or something once you get off the ride so that's the basics of everything pretty much in case you're wondering about that so we have that all set up I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just general concepts to keep in mind when doing something like this, and then we can move on to some practical application. Okay, so obviously with something like this, with the automated ride, the only difference between that and this is I have automated timings. So I have a long chain of repeaters that will go and trigger something like this to turn off a floor. With that one, I actually have all the floors that are triggered on the same loop because I have timed it so that the boat stops just whenever there's a floor triggered. So all these would be one little system or one little button and it would change them all. But it's pretty much the same as this. I just have a really long row of repeaters, as I said, that once you press the starting button, these all get chained together and go off in that fashion. There's actually only one pulse, sorry I messed that up. And then of course I have a few other components such as this piece here which controls the opening of the doors. When you send a pulse into here it actually turns on this torch for a while instead of just having a long repeater chain. But as you can see, most of this system is all just chains of repeaters leading to different components. So when working with rides or any system like this, generally what I tend to do is have a couple of different functions such as this piece here and these floors and then I just call upon those at different times throughout the system. And that seems to work pretty well. The general rule of thumb I have is if something's being done more than twice, you should probably have a function for it. Or you should have a dedicated little piece. I don't know what to call these things. I'm speaking in like programming terms, but it's okay. Not a huge problem. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. 
Uh, yeah, so that's generally how the whole thing works. And now you know. I will probably eventually include a link to download at least this ride. I might not release the whole map together because I do want to keep it kind of a surprise for you guys when you play it. But, yeah, that's the general idea. And hopefully that helped you. If you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them in comments. But I don't really want to do two redstone videos in a row. So let's get started on the final piece, which is going to be the new ride for this episode. So let's get started with that. Okay, so after struggling with MC Edit for quite a long time to actually get the jungle biome set so that we wouldn't have mob spawn problems. Although I do also have mobs disabled, so it probably won't be a problem. Either way, um, we can begin work on the thing, whatever it's called, the roller coaster. The only thing we may actually do in this episode is um, make, what's it called? Hmm. Oh, make a launching station, if you know what I mean. If you watched the first video that I put out to do with roller coasters a long time ago, you knew I had some sort of launch station that looked kind of like, uh, I don't even know. It looked a little bit like this. And then, of course, you had four minecarts in there, and then these would retract and put these blocks on. And so... I'm going to recreate something similar to that, although the difference is it's going to look better and we're not going to have those awkward delay issues that we had before. So yeah, the first component that we need to make this, oops, <laughs> because now we all know that we have to deal with components. I like that word. That's going to be a, that's a good one for calling it things. Anyway, the first component we're dealing with is going to be the launch, or no, a piston retractor thing. Because in order to make it so that minecarts are unable to move, uh, what we have to do is actually surround a track with wood blocks. The way I did this bef last time, and the way we'll still do it, was I made it so that we had these pistons here, that would push up the block below and we had these pistons here that would pull in these other tracks for example there you go see look how fancy that is okay uh, hmm and then once that's pulled in, everything works out well. And then this piece here does this whole thing. To put it back, we merely go like that. And there we go. Great. So, let's get started on that. I'm going to set up a little bit of a demo and then... Okay, so after a little bit of working with this. I figured out a design for the, the little functions here. So flip a switch, cart gets sent off, flip another switch, new cart gets sent, another switch, just gonna grab this quickly, another switch, the last switch, that just opens up the entry to start putting carts back in. So push this one in, Flip this switch, this one goes in, this switch, oh, there we go. Okay, apparently you can't do that. Good to know. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> Not too sure what happened there. And pull it. There we go, that's better put that in. Huh. 
Just realized I screwed up the recording there. Oh well. So here's how it works. Basically we have this little one wide piece here, the cyan wool, which controls the piston switching mechanism. So it replaces the track with the wood block, that kind of thing. How it works is simply when you're powering it on, this gets powered off first and then this one gets powered on. And then when you power it off, this one gets powered off first and this one waits to be powered on. So it was a little bit tricky to set up this mechanism, but basically how it works is when you power this on, this gets, uh, what's it called? This basically gets powered on, or this gets turned off, this torch here, which controls this piston. It gets turned off one tick before this one extends due to this little redstone torch here, adding the extra tick. But then when this turns off, this piece here turns off, or no, sorry. This piece here takes ec the extra little bit to turn off because when this torch is turned off, this torch turns on, powering this redstone, which instantly turns it off, and there you go. Nice little circuit. Hopefully that made sense. I know I mistook torch for lever and that kind of thing a couple times, so rage at me now if you want. That's how the circuit works. It's pretty simple. And then basically how this part works is when you turn this on or off, the torches just go through a little bit of a chain here so that when this is extended, that track is off. When it's retracted, this track turns on and the timing is long enough that the cart will not go until this block is retracted completely. So it makes for a nice little setup here. And now we just need to figure out how to do the rest of this. So yeah, I'm going to quickly look at something and then I'll be back. Okay, I made a mistake accidentally. I was kind of just redstoning off camera and then I finished it all. <laughs> Mostly because I couldn't figure out some circuits and I thought, hey, why record? Let's just figure out how to do this and then I'll record once I got it working or once I got it figured out and I just put it all together. So I'll go through the process of how this works. First the demonstration so that you can see that it does work. This button starts it. Of course we'll extend that up here. But it launches all four carts. And then when the carts return... Eh. I was seeing if that would work because I've never put them together that fast before. But yeah, as you can see, it does close up all of the pieces correctly. I didn't realize it would be an issue, so I might have to extend the pulse on that. Because I put them in about the same speed as they're coming out, and if they just travel in a loop and come back here, it could be kind of problematic as far as timing goes. But I'll explain how this works really quickly. So I already went over these blue and dark gray circuits. We'll go to the blue ones. These are basically just an RS nor latch. If you don't know that what that is, then I think there's something wrong. But anyway, RS nor latch basically it just uh, ke keeps a memory of whatever you enter into it. So if you press this button, this will stay off. Or if you press this button, this will stay off. But if you press it again, it does nothing. So that's just a vertical RS nor latch and it's handily labeled blue so you can see exactly how that's going. Next up we have this gray big mess of stuff. This includes first up, actually I'll just bring this all the way back here. I'll see if I can copy a piece of this. Oops. So this includes an AND gate here. A RS nor latch here and that's really about it. It's a pretty simple circuit even if it looks quite complex. How it works is we have this little piece here and then this this redstone torch is the output. As you can see it leads to this RS nor latch which will set that all up. I'm not sure if I actually needed another RS nor. I could have probably just wired this directly into this circuit and I might play with that 
to see if that's doable. Actually, no, it's not, because this has to... This circuit down here uses these RS neural latches to hold these pieces in place. Sorry, I just went off topic there. Anyway, the way it works is you have... You initially have this thing powered. Well, on the first piece, there's like this torch doesn't actually exist. But this piece here will be powered so that whenever you press this button here, it'll switch this torch on on the top. And then this long chain will bring this power down to be powering the next one in line. So the way that works is, if I can just set this all up, yes, I do have a circuit to reset all of these in the actual thing. Oh, that didn't work. That's... what? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the problem. Something went wrong. Something went funky. Okay. And we'll put that there. There we go. So the way it works is... This first one starts... Oh, wait, no. Press the button once. The first one turns on. You can actually just see the torches there. Press it again. Second one turns on. Third one turns on. And this is just a monostable to turn it down to two ticks. So that the... It's just so it works properly. The last piece of the circuit is obviously just the purple timing here. So what this does is each of these gates, when this redstone torch turns on, it switches this uh, RS NOR, and it opens up this little gate here. And then it goes through the timing, or goes through this delay, switches the next one on, through the delay, next one on, through the delay, next one, and next one. And finally, the delay comes all the way back around and hits this first one, this first little tower chain thing, to prepare for the carts to come back, and it turns this gate back on. So I'll just go through this one more time. Press this button, first one goes, second one, third and fourth, and then this gate comes back up. So really, it is a simple circuit, and it works out, it, it, it works really well, even if you put two minecarts in like I accidentally did there. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I foresee it working well for us in the future. Unfortunately, this is one block higher than I would like it. I might change that later. I'm not sure yet. It's not really necessary for me to... Actually, <laughs> that'd be so easy to fix. Anyway, it's not necessary for me to fix it, but the only thing right now is I can't just simply put a cap on it here because, as you can see, it runs into the redstone. I'll probably fix that up. It'll be really simple. All I have to do is put some repeaters down here. But yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, it's a pretty cool circuit, and I will be posting a map sometime, not necessarily right this first episode, but I'll be posting the map occasionally with updates, so you can explore the redstone and stuff yourself. Okay, let's see if this all works. If it does, that'll be sweet. Okay, two, working so far. And then when we come back here... There's no reason why it shouldn't work. There we go. Four. Five. So, yeah. Right now it's quite late for me, so I'm going to stop recording. I might come back and with a finished roller coaster, but that'll mean I have to delay the episode another couple of days, and I don't really want to do that. So, yeah, I think this is actually going to be the end. Keep in mind, I will be creating almost every single roller coaster based off this pattern because it supports four players so nicely, and it's so compact. You can fit a roof right on top of it, and it works just perfectly. So, yeah. You can be glad that this whole system is set up. And feel free to try to copy this if you want. It's a pretty simple circuit. We'll see how that goes. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to remind you the whole comment thing again. Last episode I got a total of one comment telling me to do some redstone work. Well actually this specifically wanted me to show them how the tower worked. So I just did redstone work in general. 
but I did not get any other comments telling me what to do, which mean, or which meant I had to do redstone work, even if some of you may not have wanted that. Okay, so I figured I couldn't leave you off in the episode without showing you what I promised, which was a new ride, specifically a roller coaster. So I brought you back to this old one I created months ago. Uh, it uses a very similar concept in the redstone, although it's really bulky, has timing problems, and of course it's harder to see what's going on here. Lots of issues, but it works okay. Just okay. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, so I'll show you the little roller coaster. I'm honestly more proud of the ride itself than the redstone work behind it, but that's okay. So the reason you didn't just see this roller coaster copied directly into my world is because, I'll be honest, it's pretty ugly. You might not think it looks that bad, and it doesn't really. The main problem is, there's only one color, so, you know, it doesn't look too great. Also that redstone's buggy, but I could have fixed that anyway. So I will be redoing roller coaster like roller coasters like this. I might even use this one just because I like how it flows, but I'll have to redesign the colors and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so I made this roller coaster a few months ago. I was originally planning to do an amusement park, I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, but I just never really got around to it. And so, yeah, I guess now we can complete that call. So, hopefully you enjoyed this episode again. Don't forget to comment, because I know you forgot already. Because that's just how you guys work. Forgetting all the time. Yeah. Next episode, I don't know what we're going to do, but I'll try to have another ride prepared. We'll see. And I'm sorry it took so long to get this episode out. It does take quite a while for me to do all this stuff, because I have to figure out different concepts and record all this stuff amidst my busy life. So, yeah. Hope you have a nice day. I'll see you next time. I'll just let this finish up for you. I forgot how drastically slow this last part is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're almost there. Just a few more seconds, I think. Yep. And don't forget to comment. Leave your suggestions. Okay, goodbye guys.